Trey, thank you for Good joining you, us Trey. and Thanks congratulations. Thank you. I think we're going to get the truth about that pass. I think there's something behind that. Well, I think before last Sunday, if anyone that's ever driven through Philly would think a Philly special is like cheesesteak with mm -hmm. onions yeah. and cheese whiz down on South Street. A loaded, loaded cheesesteak. Loaded yeah, cheesesteak, sure. as was said with better and fewer words. <laughs> and now it's Let one of the greatest play calls in the history of the Super Bowl. Yeah, so let's I – mean, this is probably, again, first time that we're talking about this with you. Talk to us a little bit about the play, what went on. Were you nervous when they called it? Did you think you would ever actually use it in the game? Yeah, we, we put it in for the Falcons, uh, the first playoff game that we played. And um, just, you know, week to week, uh, if we were in the perfect situation for it, I, feel, I felt like Coach would call it. And I was, you know, elbowing them on the sideline during the sure, Vikings game, trying to get it called. And we were up, you know, so much that he didn't want to show it. And, uh, I mean, when he called it, I remember just putting my head down, listening to the play, and Foles said, Philly special. And I, like, looked up, and I, like, like wide eye, like, all right, let's do it. And, uh, I mean, the rest is history. Now, I love the fact that um, you've given us insight as far as what the play was. But, now, when was the last pass you threw? Because I know you had some quarterbacking in your day. <laughs> I would say probably my freshman year in college. Yeah, at the University of yeah, Florida. University yeah, of Florida. see, that's what I remember. I remember yeah. you being at Florida when they converted you to tight end. But I thought what was really special about the play was, as a former quarterback, you know throwing the football is better without the glove. But you didn't want to give it away. No. So you left the gloves on, and you played with them the way you always play with your gloves. You never strap them down. No, never. So even when you threw the pass, there was no way to give away oh, the play. I was able to see that, like, because typically when you see that, a guy will take the glove off and tuck it in. And then you say, okay, in the film, you could see he didn't have a glove on. Yeah. When I saw you had both your gloves on, now the play is run. You saw that they took the fake. Yeah. You see Nick. There's 100 million people yeah. watching. Yeah. I saw the ball. It wasn't your best spiral. Yeah, yeah. Tell me how. Did you did you choke it a little bit? <laughs> Come on. It's Come. not always the best spiral. It, it gets there where it needs to be, but it's not going to be the best spiral with coming from me. You um, just knew your wide receiver was wide open. All I saw Don't was miss him. That's all I saw. I didn't see anybody else. I just C threw it up there. CeCe's mentioning you not taking the glove off before the play. But for really smart, well-coached defensive players, yeah. sometimes they can see. We've heard guys talk about, I know if a receiver's getting the ball or if it's a run play based on their yes. stance. Sure. Like, the, the, the look in their eyes. How are... When they call that play, are you instantly having to recheck yourself to make sure all your emotions and facial expressions, things like that pre-snap, are the same as any goal line play, or are you even thinking about that? I wasn't really thinking about it. You know, I was just thinking about catching the pitch from Clement and uh, and finding Foles. You know, they told me that my first option was to run, but ain't no way I was running. No, no, you pulled up. You pulled up. No you pulled up immediately. Shot. But from a play call standpoint, because we know. You and I talked about the Vikings yeah. game. And one of the disadvantages, the Vikings, they were one of the top defense in the NFL the last three years. Mm -hmm. But coming into this game, you guys had totally changed your game plan. So the Vikings or Philadelphia, they were not ready for a, as how aggressive you guys were going to play. Yeah, and like watching film the two weeks that you have for the Super Bowl, man, the Patriots were really tough in the red zone and really tough on the goal line. I don't think they had a rushing touch, maybe one the whole season um, on them and, and on the goal line. And so uh, we knew we had to do something different. And, uh, man, it was, it was really cool. What's the feeling in – because that happened seconds before halftime. Yeah. What's the feeling going to the locker room and in the locker room? when all, You guys knew when you decided to go for it on fourth down, this thing could be 15-12. Yeah. Instead, it's 22-12. to What are you guys talking about? What's the feeling in the locker room right after that play? Well, the Super Bowl halftime is double a regular season halftime. So, you know, there's a bunch of things with guys running around. We knew we were really confident going into the game, honestly. Um, we knew we had a really good shot, you know, especially with the way Foles was playing and how good our defense is. We knew we had a shot, you know, regardless of who we were playing. So uh, I think we were energized. We were ready to rock and roll, and um, we got it done in the second half. Talk to me about that confidence, because it's very easy to throw the masks on and to, to make it into sort of a gag thing, like, oh, we're underdogs and it's wonderful. But you are going up against this behemoth of a team that has so much history, against a quarterback who has so much history, coached by a guy who has so much history. So there's a lot there. You guys are a young team with a young coach and a very new quarterback to the playoff picture. Where did that confidence come from? And, and where, who did it stem from? I mean, did it come from, from Coach Peterson? Yeah, I think it comes from up top, always. You know, he's always telling us weekly, we're, you're going to win this game. You know, don't think any other way. Um, you know, envision playing well, making the big play. Um, but then also the veteran leaders, you know, who we have, you know, guys like Chris Long and LeGarrette Blunt, who played 
in the Super Bowl last year for uh, New England. Um, and just, you know, them sharing their experience, uh, what it's like to play in the Super Bowl, um, just for guys like me who have never been in the playoffs, just to understand, you know, what it takes to get there. And, and this, it's just still a football game, you know, and we're yeah. still, we're, we're a really good team and offense and defense and special teams, you know, some of the best in the NFL. Yeah, one thing your team did a great job was, was embracing material. Bulletin board material. Yeah. Now, my colleagues here, I try to tell them all the time that guys read everything, they see everything. When you say something, they will use it as motivation. The underdog, I mean, a hungry dog runs faster. Um, <laughs> Mike Lombardi saying that Doug Peterson was the worst coaching hire mm -hmm. of the previous mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. Man, the players did not miss a beat. And my friend, my partner, Nick right here, unbeknownst to Jenna and I, we tried to tell her that yeah. the Eagles are only two games away from the Super Bowl. Uh -huh. So it seems as if Jason Kelsey and the rest of Philadelphia fans, they know about Nick Wright. Yeah. Can you kind of um, <laughs> explain kind of inside uh -huh. the organization how you guys have used us, or well, no, him, yeah, yeah, as motivation? Yeah, yeah. Can I get an apology first? That's I, I, first and foremost. Listen, I issued the apology before you guys won the Super Bowl, when you guys beat the Vikings. Because okay. I had said you guys were drawing dead on making the Super Bowl, let alone no, winning No, no, excuse it. me. So, yeah. I did take him to the game. He yeah. was a guest. But the Philadelphia <laughs> and their finest, they found him. Yeah. And they let out a they roar chanting, in our section. As, as they should. They as started they should. chanting, Nick Wright sucks. That's great. <laughs> but so, you evidently, it's very odd, because the team did tweet out yesterday me being wrong about the Eagles. Destroyed they, you. They, yeah. Destroyed you, yeah. They destroyed me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Badly. But listen, bro, I love you, man. Like, I think you do a great job. I love oh. watching you, and I think you're spot on. You don't, usually don't go with the crowd. You usually have your own stats. My and, man. Bro, Thank you, I mean, Mr. Burke. I appreciate that. And I apologize. There's a big butt coming. I, was I feel like there's wrong. a butt. I was as wrong as you can be about anything. Yeah. I thought... I made, I think, my national television debut saying, write it in stone, the Cavs are going to beat the Warriors in the finals. That was before last year's finals. Yeah. I didn't think I could ever be more wrong about anything. And then I somehow doubled down on that by saying the Eagles had the least shot of any NFC team making the Super Bowl, let alone winning it. I'm happy for you guys. Congratulations. You. And I, I give that apology with all due respect. Thank you. Now, how good has the it. Super Bowl, when the Super Bowl, changed your life? Opportunities like this, you know, uh, I wouldn't be on the show if it wasn't for the Philly special and um, you know my it's just, it's just a really cool ride. The whole Super Bowl experience, the two weeks, you know, the week that you're there in Minnesota, um, you know, we're staying at the Mall of America, and there's a ton of events for my family, and um, just in a bunch of ways, you know. And I'm excited to you know use it for good and, and benefit, you know, especially my my hometown. Uh, we took a look at what yesterday was like, and CC and I spent some time in Philadelphia. We know what it's like when there's crowded streets and yeah. it's hard to get around. There were 700,000 people yeah. that turned out for you guys. Yeah. Tell me what it was like. We, we saw from the outside in. What was it like from the inside out? I think there was a lot more than 700,000, um, but it was, <laughs> it was chaos. Uh, it was a blast, you know, something that will never happen again. And uh, I'm extremely fortunate to be a part of the first, you know, world champion, Super Bowl championship to be brought to Philly. They deserve it. Wait, can, you shared a story off air. Fans are rowdy in Philly. We already know that. Yeah. But people were throwing things at you. I'm sure it was, like, with you, not laughing at you, with yes. you. Didn't one of your teammates get, like, yeah, hit we were, in the yes, face? Yes, so we we, the way they had it set up, it was a double-decker bus. And, you know, the families were down underneath and the Safe. players were up top, you know, like, waving and, you know, saying what's up to the fans. And, man, they were chucking beers. Like, I mean, from 100 well, years ago. One of your teammates had sent out a tweet. Um, a, a public service announcement. Yeah, yeah. Hydration for the players. Make yeah. sure you throw them beers <laughs> yeah. on the parade route. Well, well, Lane Johnson said that uh, he's going to give the whole city beers right. after we win the Super All right, Bowl. So they're chucking them at you. Yeah. What happened? Dude got hit in his cheek and cut him open. He was leaking. One of, one of his players. One of my players, yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the teammates got, got hit in the cheek and was leaking blood. And he yeah. probably, and he probably this applauded. Is, listen, he's probably like, nice like, shot! If that's the worst thing that happened in the parade, it pro you probably got out for okay. Sure. But sure. it was... It was wild, and I think we're gonna we're gonna let you talk about that a little bit more. Go ahead. Yeah, so we're gonna sort of analyze the parade. We play a little game called "Put a Grade on It," and where we're gonna show you something, you give us a grade. That's how it works in school. Let's start with your coach, Doug Peterson. Peterson caught a beer from a fan during the parade. Trey, put a grade on your coach's hands. Watch it. Oh! And look at the paw as he framed it. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After, so someone so could take yeah. a, a plus for sure. Impressive. A plus. Very yeah, impressive. That's 13 years playing in the NFL. Yeah. You gotta have some hands. Left-handed. Too. Oh, that's yeah, a good nice. point. Yeah. Yep. No gloves. Next, oh, he gave it an A+. Pepper's asking me what the greatest. Oh, <laughs> check out this outfit from Chris Long. 
looking, would you call it patriotic? Trey, put a grade on this outfit. I love it, man. Oh. I don't think there's anything else he could have added to the costume to make it any better. So I would definitely have to do it. That's a throwback Iverson jersey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're you're a little young, so I don't know how much Iverson you got to watch. A little bit. A little bit. But I, tr Chris is almost the exact same age as me, so we came up watching the answer in Philly long term. Now the 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 fur coat. I can't put a name on it. I, it, it. I don't know what he's emulating there. Maybe he's emulating Iverson. A, some, a boss? A, a, champ, a champion? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh okay. Two-time back-to-back. Oh, back. What oh, are you telling me? I there mean, you go. The list goes on. Touche, sir. Back-to-back. Back-to-back. <laughs> back to back. After not being in the playoffs. Yes. Yeah. Nine years, no playoff appearance. Great. What's years? the grade? What do you oh, give it? A plus. A plus. going to be a lot of A plus. Two. Moving on. <laughs> The star of the parade was hands down Jason Kelsey. Great speech, great outfit, great all around. Trey, put a grade on Jason Kelsey's parade performance. Every, how, how, could you hear everything from where you were standing? Oh, for sure. I was like four or five people to his left. His speech, his costume, the way he was running and slapping. Trey hands, Burton, they gave up on him as a quarterback. <laughs> that movie was yeah, were you, Did you feel snubbed? <laughs> no, no, I was fine. That was good. Uh, a plus for sure. Did you know he was this guy? Yeah, well, I knew he was going to have, he said he was going to have a long speech, a lot longer than everybody else. I didn't know it was going to be five minutes, um, but, I mean, he's passionate, bro, just like the fans. Was that in it. teleprompter or was that off the top of his head? <laughs> off the top of his head. <laughs> Impressive. Because he's been known as the quiet Kelsey brother. His brother yeah. Travis is in the news more, so you knew before the speech he had some flavor to him I like mean, I this? think that's just because of the position Travis, you know, plays compared to him. Um, but he's definitely outspoken uh, and a very emotional guy, and the fans loved it. Oh, that, that was a, that was amazing. The outfit was an A plus. The speech, the you delivery. Seen him, I'm 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 catching beers from these fans, right? And next thing you know, I see Kelsey on a police bike bicycle slapping hands <laughs> with the fans <laughs> on the side. It was nuts, man. He's all over the place, running from bus to bus to bus, and just crazy. All right, oh, man, last one awesome. here. Before the parade, the Eagles team account tweeted out this: a quick throwback Thursday. Before we get on the parade bus with a clip from our own Nick Wright. <laughs> Saying every team that makes the playoffs in the NFC is a better shot at making the Super Bowl than your number one seed, Philadelphia Eagles. Trey, put a grade on Nick's rant from earlier I, this year. Man, that's horrible. F minus. In <laughs> incomplete. <Nice. laughs> did Kick not him finish. Out the class. Did not. You said incomplete. <laughs> yeah. Did not finish. Hold him back. I mean, you got an F minus I and have an to repeat yeah. the grade. Yes, repeat okay. the grade. All right, listen. I gotta own it. I gotta own it. I, I was wrong. I was wrong about the Philadelphia Eagles. I was thrilled to not really thrilled to be wrong. That's a lie. I wish I was right, but I was wrong. I'm happy for you, though. You. I don't uh, know what I'm supposed to say here. Trey, thank you so much. Uh, we love that you won because you were able to have great opportunities like hanging out with us. All the best to you this offseason. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.